Hi, I am Tina Walker, and today I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm working on a um, Magic of Color mini book, or art journal. Um, I got this journal while I was in Iceland, and I've been just waiting for kind of that perfect project. Um, I really like the size of it. <clears throat> so, I title it The Magic of Color, and each page on the inside has a similar sort of design, but then I do different colors on each page. So I'm down to my last page, which is right here. So I'm going to show you how I created the pages in this journal. So the first thing that I am going to do on this page is apply some just a second. I applied this. Um, I actually got this for a class that I'm taking online. Um, it's just joint compound that you'd find in your home improvement store. So I put a little bit of this in a cup so I can um, just keep it here at my desk. So the first thing that I do is just apply that to both of these pages. I don't um, really cover the entire page, and I do a somewhat, somewhat thin layer. There is some sections that are a little bit thicker, but I just randomly apply it to both sides. You can see I'm just putting that on here. Let me do the other side. And then I will set this to the side and let it dry completely. And this book was the first book that I've actually used this uh, joint compound in, and I really, I really like the texture of it. Um, it dries to a really nice consistency. Um, you can, if you have it thicker, if you have paper, you could actually move the paper and bend it a little bit and create cracks in it. But for my project, I wasn't um, doing that. But I think for the next one, I will. So I'm going to just let this set aside and let it dry, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we are back, and this is almost dry. Um, I put the heat gun to it um, for a little bit. So the next thing that you'll want to do is put some gesso on top of this. Again, I'm not covering the whole page, and you'll see why um, later on, why I don't cover the whole page with gesso. So again, I'm just putting it on primarily over where I put the joint compound. And again, um, let that dry. You can dry it with the heat gun or you can just set it aside and wait till this step is done. When I did this book, I actually did the joint compound on all the pages and the gesso on all the pages just to have them all prepped and ready to go. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, my gesso has dried on my page, so I'm ready for the next step. So what I did on each one of my pages here I used four different colors of alcohol ink. So I did four pages of each color scheme. So there's four, well, there will be four blue pages. There's four green pages, four reddish pink pages, um, four yellow pages. So I've got the four colors of alcohol ink um, that I used on my pages. So I have denim, aqua, stone wash, and tor turquoise. I thought that made a great color combination. So for the next step, all I did was take my alcohol ink and just randomly applied some drops to my page. Um, so when I started doing the subsequent colors, especially if they were dark, I was being a little more deliberate where I put the drops of the alcohol ink on the paper. <clears throat> and then for the last color, Okay. 
And then just to get the colors to blend a little bit, I use the alcohol blending solution on each page. So I just dripped it in a couple of them, a couple areas, so you can see how it's reacting with the blending solution. And it created just some cool effects on my page. So I'll do this a close up so you can see how that looks on the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and then the next step, um, I'll be writing on the page with my pen and using the shapes that were created here with the alcohol ink as the basis for the design of my page. So I'll be right back as soon as this dries. Okay, so we're, this is dry. Um, alcohol ink dries very quickly, so I'm ready for the next step. So all I'm doing is taking a, your favorite black doodle pen and I'm going to use the shape of this um, and outline it. So I'll show you what I mean. So you can see on this page here, I've used the shapes of the alcohol ink spots as the basis for the design. And then you'll see where there's different color variations on each one of these spots. I've drawn on those pages as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll fast forward this section, but I'll show you what I've done on this page. so I am back so I went ahead and you can see where I've outlined all the different shapes and I've added some of the lines here where there's different color variations and then on every page I've added some hash marks I've added some random circles and then also on every page I actually use the colors for the alcohol ink as my inspiration so I went ahead and wrote my blue word here um, so you can see like on this page Back here, I use the word flamingo, which was one of the alcohol colors that I used here. So the next step is I take this wonderful Stencil Girl stencil, and I'm using some um, Finnabar texture paste, the white crackle. And I'm going to apply some of this to this page on top of this design. So on most of my pages I was using these square marks and these X marks. So I'm gonna just kind of randomly decide, I think I'll go with the um, crosses on the left side. Let's take some of this and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it on this page. Now many of these pages um, and you'll see here, it doesn't go on super clean. Um, I'm okay with that. I kind of like how that looked because when I do the next step, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to actually let this sit. Um, it, may take, it may take a little bit for that to dry. So I will be back once this is dried and cracked. Okay, so we are back. Our crackle paste has dried on this side of the page. So now we're going to do the next step. So I've got some watered down um, high flow. Just a second, let me get it here. High flow acrylic paint in shading gray. Um, actually, I think I might have some carbon black in that as well. Um, I've just put some some of that into water here just to make it a lot more watered down. So what I'm going to do is apply this over the whole page. <clears throat> and I like to at least first start with just some water just to get it moving on the page. But I just very liberally, liberally apply it to the paper. And now this is where you can see that magic of the um, joint compound. You can see that come through on the page. So you can see all those wonderful layers that that joint compound is making. 
And then on the edges where there is no joint compound or gesso, you can see how it has just a different look on the paper itself. So I just put it on here, um, make sure it gets in all of these cracks that are on here. Um, dab off any ex excess where I don't want it on the page. And then that side's done. And then I do the same over here. Now around the word, I want it to bleed somewhat because this is just with my pen, so it will bleed a little bit over it. Um, I don't smear it too much because I don't want it to be unreadable. So you can see I'm just doing the same thing on this side. And again, you can see all of those wonderful details from the joint compound. And again, just blot away the excess where you want it. And I like to go over with some water because then when it dries it creates some really cool effects on the page too. So I'll go ahead and close this up here so I don't spill it. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this with a heat gun. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and you can see how this has dried. So you can see where the the water and the paint pooled here, it just created some really awesome texture and designs. So, so for the next step, I outline each one of these shapes from the crackle. And just really loosely outline each one. And this is why it's important that this page is fairly dry because when you put pen to the wet paper, you might rip through the paper. Um, so you can see I've just outlined most of the shapes on there. So now I'm just going to take some water and very lightly, I'm going to mist it so you can see that it activated the pen. And then I'm just going to dry it very quickly. how that pen mark went into the crackle paste and really accentuated it. Plus it really just kind of defined those shapes a little bit more. So next what I'm going to do is grab a Posca acrylic paint marker and what I did for each one of the colors I used a coordinating color so for the blue pages I used the green um, so you can see I just colored in some of the shapes and actually I was doing that prior to putting the crackle paint on but I totally forgot about doing that for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just color in some of those random sections that I created when I previously doodled on there. And then I'm also going to color in the circle marks that I drew on the page as well. So it's just adding some additional color for interest. And when I colored in with this coordinating color, I picked some of the smaller ones because I didn't want it to overwhelm the blue color of the page. And I'm not being uh, super careful here about filling in every, every circle exactly to the lines. Um, I'm being pretty loose in my marking here. I'll do this one up here. Maybe this one here. I'll do this one over here. <coughs> And maybe this one right here. So 
I think that added enough of that green element on there. Um, and then also over here on the words, I colored in, in the same color, the inside of the letter. So let me go ahead and do that here. And then I also, on the letters, just again for a little bit of highlights, I just took my white pen and just marked on the outside of these letters. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is all dry. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and outline these marks one more time, just to give them a little bit more definition. And again, just being super loose, super scribbly around each one of these crosses and squares. And then I'm going to mist again, but this time I'm only going to um, mist it once because I want to retain some of that darkness of the pen. And again, I'm going to dry it. And then over here on this side, just because this green is so vibrant on the page, I want to tone that down a little bit. So again, I'm going to take my um, paint mixture that I had earlier and then just paint inside and dab off because it's really dark when it goes on. So again, just to create a little bit more... Um, to push it back into the background a little bit more is kind of what I'm trying to do here so it's not so um, bright on the page. Again, we'll dry that. And then the final step, which I'm not going to actually walk through here, um, but you can see that um, there's a lot of bleed through on these pages and because I really, for this project, a lot of times I would embrace those bleed throughs on both sides. I didn't want the bleed through on these pages so I'm actually gluing pages together. So I will glue these two together and I'll glue these two together. So you can see all these other ones I've already glued um, together. So when I created this journal I went every other page. And in order to glue those, I just used some soft matte, soft matte gel um, on both pages just to make sure that that um, held really well. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera. But other than that, that is done. So my journal is complete. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video. And have a wonderful day. Thanks.